I, all I have to do is make sure that I have to figure out. Hi guys, we're, we're live. I'm just sharing the, the link for you guys right now. I'm about to. So yeah, enjoy that. Share, I'll send it to myself. So I have to, let's see. So I now have shared the wrong link. Actually, I'll send it to you. That way I can pull it up on my orientation is locked. Perfect. Okay. Okay. We'll just set that right there for a little bit while people figure it out. Maybe. Okay. Now, because I closed that. Here we are. Awesome. Because I closed the, the link, I have to create a new one. if you look down the dog would be eating your heart oh, i'd be mortified because it's massive it's a <coughs> huge huge heart okay so we're live anybody that can hear me right now we're we're sitting inside setting up the video that's miss jody she's our surgical nurse she's Ready to go. She's ready to answer your questions. Actually, Jody, you hold that and uh, tell the kids why you became a nurse. Oh, I became a nurse a long time ago because I liked human anatomy and I like being in the operating room, getting to see things on the inside and helping people that way. What's your What's your favorite part of being a nurse? Um. I like doing surgery knowing that we help somebody get back to their normal lifestyle. Mm, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and what is your current job? Or what is it um, about to be? I, I work in surgery. Um, I work as a first assistant, assisting the surgeon. Um, what does that mean? Assist, what is a surgical assistant? Like for somebody that doesn't know? Uh, it depends on your surgeon. They all have different needs. Um, sometimes I, I do a lot of a lot of work and sometimes I just hold retractors so they can see it depends on um, a lot of it depends on how long you've been working with that surgeon and how much they trust you to to help them um, well, you have like some fancy like million dollar machine that you know how to run right? I do I do I know how to run the da Vinci robot yeah it's a two million dollar surgical robot um, they use as a tool in surgery and it's pretty fascinating what it can do Cool. All right, we are almost ready to go. I'll take that back from you. Uh, give us a few minutes. We'll get started dissecting in about 10 minutes. I'm just going to make sure we've got all of the links shared with everybody. You guys hang out and ask your questions. I see I've got, um, let's see, please share. Who is that? Oh, John. John asked, uh, where did you find a pig's heart? And also, hi, Lehman. Hey, John. Um, so Jody, Miss Jody didn't actually find the pig heart. It's a cow heart and liver. You'll, you'll see that, or cow heart and lung when we get out there. And it's, um, I got it from a butcher shop, like a processing plant where they take the cows in and cut them all up into steak and things like that. Super fun. Um, and for somebody who asked, uh, what am I gonna do with the heart after? I'm gonna cut up the heart and lungs into little cubes and cook them and then freeze them for my dogs so they can have some treats. Okay, so we got a bunch of questions already, that's good. Let's see, some of them aren't really related. The only other thing I wanna do is just forward that link from the email I sent, science extra credit. Oh, she's such a, she's very intense about it. I have to remember that I'm being recorded right now. <laughs> she is a special little girl. It's all she, there's nothing she wants more than to get love and affection from people. That's her job. Okay. BCC. Okay. That you go on, you take it very seriously. All right, dissection of cow. All right, so then I've got my questions here. Uh, this should update as they as questions come in from kids. So, and then this here, I 
should highlight. I'm going to create one little rule, like a little filter highlight rule. Filter by condition. Let's see. Please show. highlight it so I can tell which one because I it's um, keep it anonymous or share my name mm -hmm. conditional formatting that's what I want to do okay so can, come on it keeps like auto clicking for me okay text contains share okay so then if it's green then we can share their name and if it's not then then we don't then we can say them so you answered Jonathan questions and not mine. Oh, <laughs> uh, listen, Dustin, I know you're watching and I miss your sarcasm so much. You don't even know. Okay. Um, let's go back. Let's take a minute before we go outside and set up the actual dissection. Look, Dustin's question. How long does the process of dissecting a heart take? I think we're about to find out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to guess 20 minutes, half an hour, depending on how long we take to cut it up and cut the different parts. If you guys have been following along with all my lessons with the four chambers of the heart and the four different valves, it depends on how much we're going to cut into it if we slice it sideways or um, I'm going to let the surgical nurse handle that for sure. It's been a long time since I've done any kind of anatomy and dissections and the last time I did one was a cat in high school. So it's been a minute. You want to you add to that for Dustin? Um, I, I think it'll probably take us about 20 minutes it, for the heart. Yeah. If we had all the tools that we, uh, really wanted, we could probably do it a little more effectively, but yeah, so it might take us a little extra time, but we'll see. We'll see. Did he ask another question? Oh, how's the quarantine going? I I'm, you know, I mean the weather this week has been really depressing, so it's been really hard to quarantine, but otherwise I'm doing okay. What about you? I'm doing all right. Um, okay. Had to go in to do some emergency surgeries, but right now they're not doing any elective cases. Um, so it's been a little boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's make it exciting. All right, we're moving out. Here we go. Okay, I'll take this outside so I can answer questions. All right, Michael. Dog, stay in. You stay, Buffy. I Nope, I know you like her. You stay. Do it. Hey, get this dog in here. You get in there. Go on now, you sneaker. Go on, in the house, sneaky boy. All right, let's see. Oh, I've got double saran wrap here. So, okay. Pop this open. Orientation is locked. All right, I'm just gonna set this up right here for now. And I don't know if you guys will be able to see a whole lot, and it's probably gonna, like, be tippy. All right, I'm just gonna leave it like this for a minute while we get it set up and we should be ready to start right uh, on time. All right, go ahead and ask your questions as you think of them, guys, have fun. Oh, I got my gloves. This is way fancier than I thought I was gonna set it up. So the only thing about being outside and recording it is that- It's freezing. It's freezing and then we have to make sure we're talking really loud and real directly. All right, you ready? All I'm ready. ready. Okay. Coming at you. Good bag. Oh, it's still warm, too. Oh, it's massive. I told you. Look at that heart. Oh, there goes these boots. Okay. All right, so you're getting a good look at it. I'm going to let you kind of work with it there. Oh, take a look at that bad boy. This is the so that's the trachea, trachea, right? That's the breathing tube. Really hard with cartilage in it. Um, Why does it have cartilage in it? To keep it open, if it didn't have oh, cartilage, let's look at the... it, would, it would collapse. Right, okay, and you need to be able to breathe. As you see, I can't even squeeze it shut. You're just trying to squeeze it. Yeah. Like a vacuum Oh yeah, it's really hard. Hose. It almost feels like bone, but it's not quite bone, right? Not quite, but Almost. It's, it's okay. very firm. So just like a vacuum cleaner. This hose. is it. So this is the trachea. So my my cousin has an issue with his brachial tube, uh, bronchial tube, mm -hmm. that it collapse. It partially is collapsed in one spot. Mm -hmm. So he has very big Hard problems time breathing. Air down yeah. Into those giant lungs. Look how big these lungs are. Okay. So this cow. Gosh. I, I would say the the guts on this cow, like the intestines and stomach, were about the size of me. So this cow is a big beef. 
big, big beef. Big okay, there's beef. there's the lungs. There's like some a couple different. Do they have multiple lobes? Is that what I'm seeing? They do. They oh. do. Why is uh, that? Uh, the way we were made, generally way, speaking, there's there's two lobes on humans, each side. Well, two lobes on the side where the heart is. Oh. And actually, three lobes on the side well, where let me, the heart let me, is not. Well, let me walk around here. I would not. Sure, but it looks like cows are the cows same Cows have way. the same. Here oh. Would be the upper lobe, the middle lobe, and here is the lobe. And you said the the side that has the heart has only has two. Oh, right, and that makes sense because there's size. Only there's, there's only room for two, exactly. yep. so there's more on this side. So yep. that your your right lung. The right has, lung. Okay, so more. that's how we got to orient ourselves. This is the right side of that the cow, the right and this side? is the left side. Yeah, correct. And so the the heart to in in the cow it would point to the left, right? Okay, yep. like the pointy part of the heart. So yep, we're, this isn't going to look exactly oh, like part otherwise known as apex. Apex. And you heart. can kind of see, like from looking at the heart from the top, kind of why we have the heart shape that we do for Valentine's and stuff. Kind of. Kind of. Like it's, it's, it's a stretch. A, it's a stretch. So it's got the pointy end down here at the bottom. Yeah. Okay. So I are we looking at. I going through it or anything. Are we but... looking at the posterior or. Um, Do you know if we're looking at the front of the heart or the back of the heart? Well, from this? In, in a cow, if it were standing up, this would be... Um, it's hard to... We have it kind of yeah, mi misorientated kind of, a little bit. It's like the cow is laying down. If the cow were laying down... On its back. Eagle, this is what it would look okay. like. Okay. So we're kind of looking at a, a cow's belly. So the posterior kind of. So it's right. we're, we're going to get a little disoriented here based on... Because it's three parts out of the cow... And, you know, all over the place, pointing in different directions. So it's going to be a little tough. So if the cow was laying down and we had its legs spread apart and had sliced down its belly, this is what we would see. Oh, okay. And so, like, if the cow's head was this way too, head right? Way. Yep. So then the lungs would be pointing the other way normally. But normally, yes. Okay. Not bad. Okay. I see I got a, a private comment on a video from somebody, and I don't know if I'll be able to look at that. So... You guys hang on, I'll set this down. Jody, what do you want to start with? Like, do you want to take the, can we cut the heart off or should we leave it attached? Um, what do you want to do? You tell me. You okay. Tell me how you want to let, me, let me check out my questions real quick okay. while you kind of get it orientated the way you like it. Let's see if I can set this up in a way that you guys can still look at what's going on. Maybe, possibly. I can just see a pile of organs there. You guys hold on. How does it feel? Okay, so J Day, uh, Mr. Bezos is how he prefers to be called. Is Mr. Bezos just asked us, how does it feel? Like overall, I would assume, because he didn't give me any details. So describe nice and loud how it feels. Uh, Maybe each of the parts as you touch them. Mr. Bezos, this heart is heavy, it's uh, firm, and it's still warm. Oh, warm. Um, and I'm grateful for that because it's freezing outside. <laughs> um, if you want to. Take a look right here, Hillary. You might want to show them this. This is the diaphragm. Um, right oh, here. cool! Yes. So your lungs would be contained in that section, and this is what would separate the cavity um, from where your lungs are. To and, and there, there's an opening in the diaphragm for this that lets to the come, trachea in. come down into the heart. Whoa. Yep. And the, tell me a little bit more about the diaphragm. The diaphragm is is this kind of thin looking stretchy stretchy veil of tissue here and it would move with breathing um, right i believe we had at least one of my my classes watched a video about uh the lungs and how they work in relation to the diaphragms like yeah. the diaphragm pulls down to uh, to fill the lungs so the lungs can fill right and then it would suck back up the lungs are actually in a vacuum container uh, within, that, within okay. that cavity so um i'm gonna set i'm gonna set this down right here and let you kind of explain like the problems that might occur when because you said that the lungs are in a vacuum so i think that is like a really interesting thing to talk about with okay. uh you know problems that might occur if they are not in a vacuum like if you puncture right. something um having a hole in that cavity where the lungs are uh which can happen for a variety of reasons you get stabbed or shot huh. um those are common ones, or if a rib, one of your ribs breaks and punctures that cavity, it causes you to lose the vacuum in that, in that cavity. And when that happens, your lung shrivels up and there gets air in a space that air doesn't belong. You lose the vacuum. That's also called a collapsed lung. Oh, not a good condition to have. Um, is that something that's easily repaired or not? It is. 
fairly easily repaired by putting what they call a chest tube in. You put a, a tube that would come in and lay right here beside the lung and suck that air that's not supposed to be outside of the lung hmm. and it returns the vacuum to that It chamber. creates a vacuum seal again. Yep. Okay, chest tube is what does that. Neato. Okay, let me see if I've got, I'm looking at some of our live questions here. Let's see. Um, you keep everyone in good condition. That seems like a compliment. Um, <laughs> How, let's see, I just saw one. How long have you been a surgeon? Which I think they mean, how long have you been a surgical nurse? Yeah, I'm not a surgeon. I'm not a surgeon. I'm a surgical nurse. The scrubs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and a jacket, because again, it's cold out here. Yeah. Um, 24 years. 24 years, a, sur a surgical nurse. That's a pretty, pretty cool job, I think. Um, let's see, is a cow heart much different in any way from a human heart? Um, the biggest difference that I see in, in this cow heart versus a human heart is it's, it's a lot bigger. This heart is easily three times the size of a human heart. Um, and it weighs yeah, it's massive. a lot. So put your, clasp your hands together, like link them together, like, like that. Yeah. So that's, um, from our video, that's about the size of a human heart comparatively. So that's quite a bit bigger, I would say. Yeah. Okay. I got a couple other good questions here from... Okay. Um, from an anonymous submission, it is, how can you identify the parts of the organ very effectively? It's an interesting question. Like, how? Uh, well, I guess it takes a lot of training. It takes some training, but you can look at a diagram and, and you can see that the things are pretty well demarcated here. You can, you can really oh, tell. Oh, look at that. What is that like dark spot there? Or that, the, that, that vein? That artery. dark spot is probably an artery. This and it's, here? Yeah, it's probably one of the coronary arteries. Um, so that's what keeps the heart muscle alive? Yes. Oxygenated blood flow to the heart. And, and here would be the other. There's another you one You can actually here. see the blood moving. Oh, I don't know if they can here, see let me it, see if I can't get in. If you can get in close, close. Okay. you can see the blood moving Oh, yeah, and I see vessel. the bubbles in it. Yep. Look at that. That's pretty neat. Because the heart itself is a muscle, so it needs its own blood supply. Right. It supplies blood to the whole body, but it also needs its own. And then it looks like it's got quite a bit of fat it on it. Now, why is that a good or a bad thing or neutral? Um, it's, it's a good thing. Uh, fat, it has resources for our body. Our body needs fat um, to run on, and it also serves as padding or protection for our organs. Oh, so the heart definitely needs some of that yep. padding. So being too skinny might hurt your heart, too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot, and then we've got a lot of that padding is in here too. Yeah, a lot of uh, within within that fat contains a lot of lymph nodes usually, um, so it's not it's not just plain fat. It it has things in it that are you know helping our body along the way. Um, systems run run through our fat. I was trying to see if I could see a lymph node specifically and. I really can't, but they're hidden in there in the fat. And um, remind us, we, we studied a little bit before we left on this coronavirus break what a lymph node is and what it does. Can you give us a rundown? A uh, lymph node is, is part of your body's system that fights disease. It's, it's how our body um, engulfs bad things like viruses and bacteria. And, kills them. And kills them to yeah. transport oh. them out of our body, keeping us healthy and safe. Yeah. It's, it's our body's defense. All right. And then I, I have a question from a student who wants to know the hardest surgery you've ever performed. Um, coincidentally enough, the hardest surgeries I've ever performed are heart surgeries. Heart surgeries. Um, I did work for about, I don't know, three or so years on the heart team in Pueblo. And um, hearts are difficult because you're dealing with blood under a lot of pressure. And a heart, you know, your heart, your brain, there's a few organs that you really can't live without. Um, you can live without your gallbladder, mm -hmm. you can live without lots of things, but you can't live without your heart. Yeah, so kind of need that. It's quite stressful. Yeah, that's a high, that's a very intense mm -hmm. surgery. All right, I, I suppose we ought to start with uh, getting that heart separated, if okay. we can. All right. Let's so I'll let you get going on that. I'll see if I got any more questions. Uh, oh, J uh, Mr. Bezos wants to know, I believe he's asking me if you can eat the cow heart, which, I mean, yes, sure. I suppose Come you on, could. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's know how that works. I mean, like, I, I'm going to feed it to the dogs because there is nothing appetizing about these parts to me. Certainly, it's, a, it's up to you if that's something you're interested in eating. I mean, to me, it, like, it has all this fat on it. I wouldn't want to eat that. And then the um, cardiac muscle is a very different kind of muscle from um, the muscle that we are used to eating. So I, I personally would not. The dogs are going to enjoy little cubes of it so that it doesn't go to waste. Oh, look at that super sharp scalpel she's using to cut that. 
So can you describe anything about your technique? Because you're kind of doing a little slicey. Um, well, Is there a reason but, you do it that way? Yeah. Um, you don't want to accidentally pass what you're trying to cut oh. and cut into something that you didn't intend to. So if you do like one long slice, right, right. that so would be a problem. You go kind of in smaller motions so if mm. you do make a mistake it's not tragic oh look at the blood pooling in there right in there which yeah. what is that i'm looking at that's got to be the I aorta that's the aorta yeah. yeah so that is connected up here somewhere yeah i'm gonna kind of get it get the heart okay. off and reorient and okay make sure we got a lot of big vessels oh, um, coming into and going out uh of my one of my really great eighth grade students x just asked what is the longest surgery you've ever performed um, the longest surgery I've ever performed is probably, um, where somebody lost most of the skin and tissue covering their, their leg <gasps> from a motorcycle. They got like, ran over oh my gosh. by a car, um, after falling off their motorcycle. And so we had so like road burn a, kind of like yeah, skinned massive it. massive road burn wow. all over their whole limb. So, um, we had to take tissue from their from their upper thigh and move it down to cover the bones in the lower leg and, and wow, we had so... to transpose the vessels down there. Oh, okay, so yeah. a lot of intricate work Very it sounds intricate like. intricate with a microscope, yes. Wow. Yep, to try to get tissue coverage over the bones. So you can see here we've kind of cut off the whole respiratory system off of the heart. Okay, so now we have the respiratory system separate from the heart, the circulatory system. Yep, and you can see these massive vessels that take blood in, in and, and out. out. Yeah, look at those heart. bad boys. So this definitely is the aorta. Yep. All right, um, super gross, but give it a squeeze. See if you can get some of that blood out of there. Look at that. Ugh. So there's definitely some blood pooling up in here from when it just got cut. So then, ooh, oh, exciting. Look at that. I wanna make sure that we're oriented the same way you are. So you're looking into a huge vessel, like, or a huge pipe. Like, what is that that you're looking into? I believe into? that's the right atrium. Wow, so that's the top right yep. cavity, or, um, uh, top right chamber. Chamber. The heart. That's the word I'm looking for. Yep. And it's kind of small comparative to the rest of the heart. Right. Because that one doesn't have to do a, a whole lot of work. No, that's, that's it just as a little collection chamber um, where the unoxygenated blood comes into the heart. Um, uh -huh. um, Mr. Bezos also, let's see. How do you do something like that, Miss Jody, without gagging? <laughs> <laughs> also a good question. Yeah. Um, I prefer to work on um, bodies that are alive. Right. And um, Hillary had some convincing to do to get me to do this. Yeah. Um, She's a good friend. I'll tell you guys that much. Yeah. Um, and actually, I'm glad that it's warm. I was afraid that it was going to be cold and yeah. refrigerated, yeah, it definitely which is. really grosses me out. It's I, cooling off quickly, yeah. but it is definitely still warm. I had been to a pig lab before when I was learning to use the robot, and I, I actually really, really did not like it. Um, when the parts were cold, it, it seems like they're dead, and I don't like that. That's never yeah. a good thing. Yeah, cold. Yeah, so cold is dead. Cold is bad. All right. So you can oh, see the now. inside. Oh, look at that. Of that right atrium, the actual fibers. Those are muscle fibers, of the huh? Muscles. And we're yeah. looking at cardiac fibers. I'm gonna yeah, zoom right in on cardiac that. Cardiac muscle right there. Wow, look at that. That's it's so smooth. Yeah, it's very smooth. Neat looking. Yeah, so that's like that's doing some of that like squeezing yeah, motion. That's, that's what that's designed to do is be able to so squeeze. That's the wall of the right atrium, the yep, upper, the internal upper wall. right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Neato. All right, so we can. It's really see. Funky I was looking. gonna see if you could see the valve at all. We should be able yep. to get into Here it somehow. Here is the flaps of the valve. Okay, she's moving that around. I don't know if you can see it, but those those are the flappies of the valve where the blood goes into um, the where, right ventricle. Where blood goes in, but it can't come back out. That's right. It's a one-way ticket, hopefully. Hopefully. Assuming there's nothing wrong with your valve, which I imagine you've done some heart surgeries where Absolutely. there's something Replaced wrong. Absolutely. Replaced valves that are, that are having problems. Either they're, they're ripped and they're not functioning correctly, or um, as a result of smoking and bad diet, they've gotten calcified and the valves are stiff, so they can't. So they don't let blood in very well right. either. And they don't hold it in, so it leaks backwards under pressure. Ugh. You can see how thick that wall is. So that we're looking at an atria. atrium. Atrium? Uh, no, this will be your this ventricle is, okay, down that's a here. Ve oh, ventricle yeah, walls are the ones is, that have the right. thick muscle. Yes. Because they're the ones that have to push that blood they up do. out. They, they have, have to, to be really this, thick. This right ventricle over here is going to be responsible for pushing the blood to the lungs. This is unoxygenated blood that's going to be in this chamber. 
Oh, neato. Look at that. Look thing. at this. What freaking, is all that that we're looking at? That to me is one of the most beautiful things. Um, that is a valve, and those are little like parachute cords that support the valve when it opens and closes. Okay, so the valve is up. Would be up in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. we cut through it. That's one of four valves. Yep. And this right side, you can see it's thick, but it isn't yeah, going to be as thick so as the left side. Yeah, compare that to the um, the atrium. Right, the right atrium. Mm -hmm. Compare that thickness. Like, there's a huge difference in thickness. Like, you can see oh, yeah. what, like maybe an inch to three, three almost. Three inches. Yeah. Wait till we get to the left ventricle. So that's the right ventricle. So that. What did you say? That job is to pump the, the blood into the lungs. That's right, because the right side of the heart is going to be receiving the blood that has not been oxygenated, and it's going to send it to the lungs where it receives its oxygen. Yep. And then it's going to come back into the heart, and it's going to come back into the heart. Oh, if you can, here. try to preserve a valve so we can... Oh, look at that. So it comes back down in through here. It comes back down in. Um, oh, look at that. I can stick my finger right <laughs> through. That's the aorta, yeah? Um, or not. No, That's the aorta. Vena cava. This is going to be your um, pulmonary artery. Pulmonary. Uh-huh. Okay. And then... Right, because that's the one it's going to squeeze it up. Pulmonary means to the lungs. To the lungs, yep. so it's going to go up pulmonary through that and off to the lungs. Yeah. So then it comes back in it through comes a different direction. Back this way. Back in through that one. Yep. To go you into can that. See, can you see my finger? It's going to come back from oh, the lungs. Oh yeah, look at that, just a little bit. Right through there. And there's a valve right about where your finger yes, is. Yes, there is. Uh, it's going to come back through the lungs after receiving its oxygen. It's going to come back through the lungs into this left ventricle, which is the top part of the left side of the heart. Mm. And this is going to be freshly oxygenated blood. Or is that left atrium? Left atrium, did I right. say? The atrium is the, yeah, yeah, did I top, say right? something yeah. wrong? Like attic, right? Would that be yeah, how I remember yeah. it? Yeah, left atrium. The, the left top part of the heart is the atrium. Right and here. it has that similar kind of muscling yep. right here. Yep. And if you can see my finger, there's another valve there. Oh yeah, I see. Let me see if I can move around just a little bit. Where am I looking? Oh, that's the tube. Oh, here. Okay. There we go. So I can see those parachute cords you were talking yeah. about in there. Yeah. Oh, let's see how close I can get in there. I think the actual term for those is 10-day corday or ten something. 10-day corday. We'll have to have somebody look that up who's watching. See if they can't tell. All see right, if I got, so. I got some new questions. Okay, so go. you keep going. Just do your best to preserve a valve so maybe we can put some water in it. Okay. If possible. Let's see. I got, let me see where we're at. Have you ever performed a heart transplant, Miss Jody? I have not performed a heart transplant. You tell um, us something about it, if you know. Well, transplants are done usually in, in very large cities like Denver, um, where it's easy to get the organs. Um, the closest I've ever come to doing a transplant is uh, we have done some harvests um, from donors um, at the local hospitals here when people have had organs that were um, viable viable yeah. and, and going to be put to good use we have um, so you, out you've on helped on a team uh -huh. a transplant this, team, uh, transplant team. Yep, interesting the team comes and, and we support them while they're doing their job they're very well trained because those organs are so precious yeah um, you know they, they really you don't want to mess anything up you don't want to mess anything up and they need a lot of special training to be able to do that so that's so a, a, a transplant team's a serious job it is here's a great look okay. right into Let's that left atrium Oh, yeah. So you can really see those paracord. I, I don't know the name of those cords exactly, but I'll see how close in I can get there. Yeah, look how cool that looks. So we're look, I'm looking down into, so if I'm blood, I'm going down in here oxygenated, oxygenated from yep, the lungs. That's correct. Going into that top atria, the left atria. Yep. Okay. Let's see what I got for more questions. Um, oh, a kid asked me what happens if there's a hole in your atria. Yeah. So I, I feel like that's a better question for Miss Jody than me. But if there's a hole in one of these upper chambers, I imagine the blood is not going to go where it's supposed to. It is not going to go where it's supposed to, and it's not super compatible with life either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a hole in your heart is basically what you're describing. Yes. Uh, yes. Let me see who asked that. That was oh, that was uh, Leorn. Welcome to the video chat. Uh -huh. That's a that's a good question. I mean, truly, like I like uh, miss jody was describing earlier like you know uh with the lungs if you get a perforation or a hole in those like that ruins the vacuum seal of the lungs so do the same to the heart in a way where it ruins that like closed chamber of blood pumping right. if there's a hole it's not going to be able to pump as effectively right the good the good thing is is that um there was a backup plan uh the way we were made and the heart's contained within its own sac 
So that sac can only expand so big. Does that sac have a name? Um, peri pericardial? Per pericardium, yes. Okay. And, and within that pericardium, the heart is free to kind of move around because it's slippery and wet. If blood gets out of the heart through a hole, it's only got so far to go. So generally speaking, you, you can only lose so much blood. Um, but then the problem becomes that the, the heart can't pump effectively because it's being squeezed. It's, it's got that pressure from the blood right. on the outside of it. Right. Yeah, and the, the guys at the shop that gave me this, they cut the pericardium off right. so that I, yeah, they exposed the heart for me. That's yeah, not here. Exactly. The sack is gone. Yep. Okay, so let's see. That went with the cow. Um, Mr. Bezos wants to know if it smells bad. And actually, I haven't noticed. My nose is running. It's kind of too cold out. <laughs> it's so cold out. That, um, I couldn't tell if it smelled bad or not, but I, it's fresh, so I really don't think it does. Check back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you might get a different answer. And we've got um, an anonymous question for Miss Jody. Um, have you ever amputated somebody? Oh, yes. Um, Multiple times, I'm sure. Amputations are, are um, something that we deal with very frequently. Uh, we have a high rate of diabetes here in Colorado, and amputations because of diabetes and smoking are one of, one of the most common procedures that mm -hmm. we do, unfortunately. So that's probably feet, mostly, legs, um, It starts arms. with toes and works its way up. Yeah, depending on how bad it is, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, how are we doing? What do you got for us? Well, I just wanted to show you how thick this left ventricle... Um, the wall. The wall. Look at that, yeah. It's, it's just massively thick, and there's, there's a really good reason for that. Um, this this left ventricle is the part that's responsible. Look how thick wow. that muscle is. That that's is so pure much muscle. muscle. Pure heart muscle. And the reason that it's so thick is because this ventricle is responsible for pumping the blood out of out of the chamber. I mean, just look how into the into thick the whole body. Yeah. That's how little the chamber is. But this is just oh, that's all the okay. Muscle. Let me get right in there. So point it out. It yeah. So bit, right so where you you're kind of cutting. That's the chamber of the, the chamber. we're looking at the left ventricle, right? Yes, the okay. left ventricle. But this muscle is all there to support that chamber and pumping that blood out into the entire body of the Yeah, so it, that that part that of the four chambers, that one has to have the most muscle. Of the four chambers, your left ventricle is the largest, um, strongest and coated with the most muscle because it's it's feeding it's feeding blood out to your entire body. Right. And you think about your body in this, relation to your heart this size. This muscle is just really thick and firm. Um, yeah. this was a good healthy cow. Yeah, this was a um, grain-fed cow. Mm -hmm. I'm told. No antibiotics or anything like that. Just a healthy cow that got to eat lots of food and walk around a whole bunch. Well, you can see here. Let's see what we're looking at. Oh, there's some of your rip cords there. Yep. Controlling the valves. So in that valve, so this valve at the top of the left ventricle is that that one controls the flow from coming back. Backwards, correct. So because the this, this, blood's going to go up out that way. This ventricle is under such pressure when it when it pumps and it goes to push blood out of your body. That mm -hmm. valve has to be super strong, or the blood would backflow. Yeah, and, and then backflow what's the point? Blood, well, not only what the point is, it'll kill you. Um, backflow back blood is bad for is you. Bad, yeah. So again, this is just how thick that. You know, the chamber itself relatively small, but the muscle that, that is there to push that blood throughout the entire body is huge. Yeah, that's like, it's so much muscle. Like the majority of the weight of this heart, I think, is in the left oh, ventricle. Oh, absolutely. Easily. Absolutely. That's that's a fact right there. That, and it's super dense muscle too. It's like a really, like for how much muscle and work it has to do, it's really dense. So it's really, really strong. It is. Probably one of the strongest in your body. Like, I Probably think there's a lot so. of different kind of yeah. conversations about that, yeah. but yeah. one of the strongest muscles in your body because it has to do a lot of work. It really has to push. And look how just tiny that the actual space is it's inside really it. Small, it's isn't really it? tiny. Yeah, whoa. Weird. Meaty, meaty. Well, we got a couple more questions. Keep going. Mm. Let me take a look. Um, so, this is a another question from Leorn. Uh, Post-mortem, when the blood clots in, the, in an organ donor, do you have to flush the heart before sending it off? Um, they, they don't ever let it um, clot. They use a lot of drugs, 
heparin mostly to keep the blood from clotting so that there wouldn't be any clots in it. Mm -hmm. um, but oh, yeah. It's, it, like in a normal situation where it's not a donor, it might clot. It absolutely would. It yes. will. Um, you have to use a lot of heparin whenever you're working in the vascular system, whether it's the heart or vessels in your in your leg or wherever, you have to use a lot of heparin to keep the blood from clotting. What's a, what's a common name for heparin? Um, like what would heparin is the common name like uh give me like tell me just a little bit about what its action is i guess um heparin is a blood thinner, blood and thinner. It, it keeps the blood from clotting um similar to a lot of a lot of people may be familiar with the drug coumadin um coumadin. it's a pill a lot of people take when they have heart problems and they need to keep their blood thin hmm. along those lines all right i think i have another let me take a look here okay um another question from hi she says, approximately how much blood do you think is still in or attached to the organs? I mean, that's not a lot, really. No, it's like, kind of like a you've seen some system, of it. Like draining a hose, once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah, like they, they kind of, like once you, I mean, it's kind of gross, but once you kill the animal, they, they let out a lot of that blood. So there's some areas where it was trapped. You saw that we could like kind of squeeze it out of the aorta and stuff, but like there's really not a lot of blood. I mean, it's red, so there's blood in it. Mm -hmm. There's, there was but a actual lot of blood, blood in it flow, at one blood time. vessels, yeah, not much. See how strong those. Yeah, you're really those yanking on those little too. tendon cords are. Yeah. And I what? Mean, they're um, super strong. Like, what kind of tissue is that? Is that connective tissue? Um, that you're yeah, on? yeah, definitely connective tissue, and it's it's very firm. Yeah, like it takes a lot to snap those, I'd imagine. Oh yeah. Can you um, cut one of those with sure. the? Let's take a look. I'll slide under this one here. Yeah. So they cut pretty easy. Anything but there's a lot of yeah the yeah there's a lot of tension though that's <laughs> there, in there is you can I see mean there suit you can't pull it I mean no I'm and I can see you're pulling the heart hard when you pull as I that. can there I can cut it with my sharp scalpel yeah. but I can't pull it um, and you can see this this was our valve up here and I'm so I'm that's another backflow preventative that's yeah. the one that prevents yeah. it from coming back before it goes to the lungs right exactly okay. back in, into your lungs Let's see uh. Destiny, she asked, um, what is the, where does the jugular vein connect with the heart? The jugular, that's like your carotid, right? Am I thinking the right way? Yeah, your jugular vein is up in your neck and it goes into some bigger vessels before it gets to your heart. And what would that connect to directly in the heart? The aorta or the other one? I can't think of the other one's name. Uh, vena cava? It would connect to your, I believe your inf uh, superior vena cava. Okay. Because it's a vein. So that the carotid or the the jugular your is the one that goes. Carotid is an artery. The carotid jugular is, is a vein. so carotid has oxygenated blood, Correct. and then the jugular has deoxygenated, right. going back to the heart. Right. Exactly. Your carotid artery is in your neck, and that's that's a really fun surgery. Um, a carotid endarterectomy where they yeah. basically take years of buildup plaque and things Ooh. out of like that. fatty tissue and stuff that's in it's there. It's actually hard. It's not more like Ooh. calcium. Um, almost like plaque on your teeth. Ugh. Yeah. In um, the arteries. And the how does that, artery. like, like take a step back. How do you get buildup like that in your carotid? Uh, in your artery say, that's supposed to have blood in it. The number one way is probably smoking, followed by diet. And, and in that mix is, is genetics, unfortunately. There's, yeah. there's some Sometimes things, there's not much you can do. Things we can't control. Um, and that's our genetics. But lifestyle choices, we definitely can. That's environment. That does make a difference. Yeah. So... What are we cutting up in here? Um, I was looking to see what would be a good valve for you to to take a look at. To huh? take a look at. I'm gonna see if I can kind of okay. dissect down on this and see if there's a valve in there you can put your hose in. Okay, uh, Destiny. Know. Destiny also asked. Um, I, I, she said dissertation, but I believe she meant what's your favorite part of dissections. dissections. And for me, it's just about looking at the inside of things. When I was in seventh grade, we did worms and clams and crayfish and squid, frogs, cats. Like I have dissected so many things through school. Um, I think my favorite thing is to just see the insides of stuff. Anatomy is really beautiful. Um, when I first started working in surgery, I, I think I was most impressed and still am by the anatomy of the neck. Hmm. Um, when you're doing those carotids, you know, there it, everything is confined to a very small space and you have to um, obviously keep things intact because it's going to the brain. Um, but there's a lot of nerves, there's lymph nodes, there's vessels. 
Um, so doing a carotid endarterectomy is still probably my favorite procedure. And so an, an ectomy is removal, right? Removal of that plaque in your carotid artery. Say it's it again, it's carotid. Carotid endarterectomy. So endart is... Endart is meaning to cut into the artery. Okay. Um, and that's what you do is you put a big slice right lengthwise in the artery and then you scrape that plaque Ugh. out of there with little Just like you would at the dentist. Just like you would at the dentist, yep. Yeah. Um, kind of lift the plaque up out of there and then... Then you stitch you, it back up? You fix the hole that you created to get it out with. What's the what's the recovery time on, on something like that? Like once they're stitched up, when can they go back know, to normal life? Um, pretty quickly these days. Uh, they actually put a, put a Gore-Tex patch to... Cr- to, to seal the hole. To seal the hole, um, and so that when you're when you're shutting the hole, you don't uh, narrow the vessel. You want to keep it the same you size it was. You want to keep it the same size, exactly. So they use a patch, and once they get that patch in there and sewn up, get the patient woken up and make mm-hmm. sure nothing's gonna bleed. Um, it it. Uh, and they're off they go off they go um, probably they can't like go and run a marathon the next day but right. they can go no, back they can kind of work back make up sure their blood pressure stays within you know normal limits you don't want to blow out the patch that you just sewed in there ah uh, yes we learned a little bit about about blood pressure in the eighth grade videos we watched the systolic and diastolic is uh, yep. a little complex for me i've always i'm always confused about it but it's the relative pressure of the heart taking in blood and pushing blood out. Yeah, it's the it's the amount of pressure that's present in your vessels at any given time. Um, and just like a garden hose, if you have it under high pressure for a long period of time, eventually you're gonna have a blowout. Yeah. And it's no different inside the body. Um, um, another student asked, uh, can we see the dogs quickly? And I'm going to say, no, they are not allowed out here while we're doing this because yeah. I do not want them jumping up on the table or trying to steal the heart or anything stupid. Yeah, somebody asked they might get too excited. Gross and I'm, I'm in professional mode, so it's not gross, but if the dog were to take a bite. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, we don't need that. Vomit. Oh, let's see. <laughs> Man, I really wish I could share who's asking these questions, but they asked to be kept anonymously. So, student, you know who you are. Oh, no. the, the question is, um, what if you eat the blood? Like, what is wrong with you, child? And I hope you tell some of your friends that you asked that question so you can take credit for that. Because, I mean, eating blood, I mean, blood is just blood, right? There's, it's connective tissue, technically, right? Yes. Like so, it's just you blood can try cells. It. It's um, it's called blood sausage, which contains oh yes, but congealed blood and spices. What do they call that in Louisiana in the South? Boudin. Boudin. I would sooner die than eat anything like with congealed that. blood. So yeah. like basically, you're eating blood clots, is what you're saying. Exactly. That's exactly what you're eating. So there is, you have the ability to eat blood. Like that is something you know. And then when you have a juicy steak, that's like cooked blood. So. Yep. I mean, or if you have a rare steak, it's right. uncooked blood. Yeah, so, like, there's definitely, you're eating blood if you are a meat eater or you like boudin sausage. All right, I dissected this vessel out. <laughs> oh, and Mr. Bezos wants to know, for me, would we have done dissections if we had school? And, yes, the plan was to, to do this at school for you guys. So you'd come up and look and wear gloves, and you'd be able to touch all this stuff, too. So just th- this is our adaptation. What did you cut out right here? What is this I, big I'm not tube? sure which vessel that it, actually But it, it was. is a massive vessel, it huh? It is. It might, I think it might have been part of the aorta. Um, oh, I was that. looking to see if it would, uh, if you could um, squirt some water through that if you wanted to. Oh, sure. You might be able to um, see how valves work, but with this cow obviously being dead, I'm not sure that they're going to work that great. No, it might not work perfectly, but yeah, I can set that up. Um, it, it kind of feels like I'm squeezing it and it, it feels strong like muscle, but it definitely doesn't look like muscle. What are these vessels made of? Um, they're also made of different layers of connective tissue um, and they have actual muscle in them. Okay, so there is some muscle in there. There is. Um, it's it's little muscle fibers that okay, help Oh, weird. Little muscle fibers that kind of help push it along. Yep. You're looking back at that trachea again. This trachea is really cool looking. I wonder how far down we can see that. Let's see if you keep it straight. You can see a ways down at what, what we're going to do once we get to the lungs. We'll, uh, we've got a, a bugle thing that we can fix up to that. And we'll be able to blow into it so you can see what happens with the action of the lungs. And there's my neighbor driving by. Fun for him. <laughs> All right, let's see. <laughs> <Poor> neighbors. 
I know, my neighbors probably didn't deserve to see, like, a bunch of dead animals. Oh, you got, you got a compliment from one of my students. They said, you are doing a really good job. You seem like a nice person and you're really pretty, Miss Jody. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> yes. Luckily, being pretty is not an, a requirement for the job of a surgical nurse, no. but Jody happens to also be pretty too. Um, she also asked me, why are we learning about the heart and all that? Like I, so I'll tell you my perspective as a teacher. I think one of the best things that, that you can learn about is your own body and how it works. Miss Jody, what, what would you say? Why would you teach kids about heart and lungs? I would teach you about your heart because it is vital to, to life. It's an organ that people don't think about because it does its work on its own. You don't it's a very to, thankless job. It's a thankless job. You don't have to tell your heart that it needs to work, but you just depend on it to work. Um, some people don't do a very good job at taking care of their heart in a number of ways. Um, but heart disease is no joke, man. You want to you wanna live a long, healthy life, you need to take care of that heart. Now I'm kind of dissecting off this, Getting. this lung so we can have a look at it. And we'll still have the other lung attached yep, to the trachea. That's still good. Attached to the trachea. I think we have a follow-up question from Leorn. Um, what do you do with the balloon to remove the plaque in the heart? I think that's a follow-up question from some of the plaque uh, removal you're talking okay, about. Yeah. Um, we do actually use balloons when we do non-invasive procedures, but when we do open procedures, um, we use good old fashioned scrapers to scrape that plaque off. Um, but as medicine has progressed, we're able to do some, some loosening and dislodging of things um, with balloons and when we're done with them, we throw them away. <laughs> okay, Mr. Bezos asked, um, I, following up for what we were talking about with the blood, um, why, what's bad about consuming blood? And I think there's probably pros and cons. Um, there's so, not anything necessarily bad. It's like, more of a personal preference. Yeah, like, I mean, it, I'm not encouraging, nor is Miss Jody encouraging any of you to drink your own blood or drink anybody's blood. I want to make that very like clear. Would I would <laughs> discourage it. Like blood is very iron rich, but there are other ways to get iron in your diet. Blood will definitely upset your belly. Yeah, it would upset your tummy quite a bit because uh, I would imagine it would change the pH levels and the acidity of your stomach. Blood, blood is not meant to be in your stomach and it yes. causes a lot of GI upset. Ew. Make you puke. Um, yeah. When people have bleeds in their belly, it, oh, it, it makes feels them bad. vomit. It Ooh. hurts. And uh, it smells really bad, yeah. too. Blood has a very specific place to be in your body, and your stomach is definitely not one of them. So um, here we, we cut Ooh, this yeah, let's left lung kind of off the heart, and let's uh, kind of cut into <laughs> it. JJ, you're the worst. Let's see what this looks <laughs> like inside of here. Okay. We're well, going to move on from the blood conversation. We're going to slice open some lung to take a look at what's going on in there. You can see there's it seems a, like some white bits. Oh, is that some... There's a vessel. That's a, one there. of the... Yep. There's, there's a lot. People forget that within our lungs is a lot of vessels because the oh, job yeah, look at them. of I can our see lungs... A whole bunch of them. See, there's yep. tons of them. The vessel, little small ones, big ones. So those are little brachial or um, bronchial vessels. Um, kind some of, of them. Give and me some, some, them give me some also, real names for them. Well, you've got your... Oh, look at that big one. Yeah, that would be a, a bronchi where air is traveling through. That These, one's probably coming directly from the trachea. Yes. Okay. Um, I think the one coming directly from the trachea. I'm, I'm looking right. at... Am I looking at... This is this is the top of the lung this way and this is the bottom, yes, right? Yes, I okay. flipped it around. All right, just making sure. This is the bronchial coming off your your main bronchus coming off, yeah. your, off your trachea. Yeah, that's a and big one. And it's firm. Yeah, let me take a... Oh, wow. Yeah, it's actually... It, it's, it's it feels like the cartilage... Much, much yeah. like the trachea. Maybe not quite as firm, but but still pretty firm. But pretty solid. Like, like hard to collapse. So that's yeah. where my cousin has a problem in his lungs is that that is like... I'll try and... I'll try and squeeze a little bit. So he has it, <laughs> it's like collapsed a little bit in there. So he has trouble breathing in certain situations and they're working on putting some kind of stint uh -huh. or, or otherwise to try and get it to, to stand up correctly. Yeah. This is, you know, your asthmatics and things. This is where they, they have trouble with these closing down and then they can't move air. Oh, they um, get constricted. They get constricted mm. and they're unable to move the air. Um, so in addition oh, wow, to your, to your, airway chambers this here is a is a vessel for blood mm. um, because you have a lot of blood 
traveling in and out of your lungs. Right. The lungs have a massive surface area Another so that airway. they can get a lot of air and or get a lot of oxygen and carbon dioxide exchanged. So, so like the firm your... ones are the airways mm -hmm. and the softer ones are the vessels yep. for blood. Yep. They're easy to tell the difference. Just uh, by looking? Oh, you can tell uh, just these two next to each other. You yeah, can tell see, which this one which. stays open. This yeah. one's going to be for air. This one here kind of closes down. That one's going to be, it's soft and that's going to have mm. um, blood traveling through it. But you can see how different, how much softer this tissue is versus the muscle tissue of the heart here. The, the muscle in the heart is firm. Yeah. And this lung tissue is soft very, very like a soft. sponge. Yeah, very spongy. Um, so we got um, a, a comment from X. I always thought the lungs were hollow in a way. And um, I, I would agree with you that that's something I thought too. A lot of people think that and they're, they're not actually hollow. Um, there, there's millions of tiny little, tiny little sacs um, that you can't really see with the human eye. Yeah, you can put and, them under a microscope. Yeah, and these sacs um, called alveoli are what actually blow open with air and they are they become very thin and allow the blood to become, you know, the transfer. Diffusion. Diffusion of oxygen um, from the air that you breathe in into the blood and then bring that oxygenated blood back to your heart. But they're not hollow. Um, when they do become hollow, um, that's a, a medical condition and not mm. a good one. It's called emphysema. And, emphysema. And basically, um, emphysema usually caused by smoking or other environmental um, toxics, toxins have ruined those little small sacs. And so your, your lungs do essentially become hollow and there isn't enough room for the blood to be spread out, go thin out yeah. and have that diffusion occur. Kind of sounds like it loses surface area. Exactly, that's exactly what happens. All right, Q, keep doing what you're doing. I'm gonna check out what I got for questions over here. Okay, keep checking. Let's see. Um, um, Leorna, Leorn asked, where do heart murmurs normally develop? Um, or maybe tell us what a heart murmur is first. A heart murmur would be an irregularity um, in the sound of, of the beat of your heart. The lub dub. The lub dub, kind of goes lub, lub, lub dub. Um, there's different heart murmurs and they occur in different places of your heart. Um, and depending on where your heart murmur is picked up, it can indicate a problem that needs further investigation usually. Um, one, one thing that people are misled by sometimes is that a lot of people have heart murmurs and they live just fine lives and there's actually nothing seriously wrong. I had a horse that had a heart murmur that was perfectly I have healthy. A heart murmur. You As do. As you can see, I'm, I'm living just it's fine. It's just a slight whoosh in the sound, right? It is, it is. And um, some people have them and, and there's no real good reason for it. Genetics, maybe? Um, something genetic, most likely. But um, having a heart, heart murmur in and of itself is not deadly. It can indicate a problem that needs addressing. <laughs> uh, okay, so Selim has finally decided to take credit for all his weird blood questions. Uh, so you're welcome, everyone. Selim was pressured into uh, admitting that he has all the blood questions. Into, yeah, are, we're, yeah. Is well, someone saying? already commented that we have a vampire among us. So <laughs> I, I mean, I, it's a little bit surprising. He it doesn't strike me as a vampire. He's very, very good at that plague ink game, which is like how you destroy all of humanity with a virus. But awesome. you know. <laughs> If he could turn those tables and destroy the virus. Yeah, right yeah, right let's, now, I'd appreciate yeah, that. that'd be nice. Get back to work. We'd all like to do normal th things now. Okay, so what he asked is what if you ate it raw, other than most likely getting salmonella? Like eating, I assume he means eating like the heart or blood or other weird things. If you eat raw blood, you will vomit. Oh. Um, guaranteed. Yeah, there's something about like your brain and your digestive system that work together to tell you what is good tasting and bad tasting. And, and like a cup of blood is definitely a bad taste for your, your digestive system. Yeah, like, and then I want a 500 page essay on the way it smells <laughs> when you do vomit. Yeah, well, the combination of like bile and blood. Yeah, right, okay. Let's yeah, else. let's move. Let's, uh, thanks, Selim. It's great. Yeah, moving along. <laughs> let's go look at these lungs here. All right. So, so we, we kind of cut into that lung and, and talked about how soft and spongy and Yeah. Oh, and look at some of the blood squishing out of there elastic these tissues are to be able to expand in this state the the heart the lung is is deflated like a empty balloon yep um and it would puff up you would be really surprised to see how far it'll puff up and i think maybe yeah, we'll see we'll see if we can make that work here to, i'm gonna set this do down do for here. a second to get this and you set it up i'll get right, my i'm gonna kind of cut this diaphragm off so we can see this lung good 
Gross. Tell Miss Jody, I, Dustin says, tell Miss Jody I made Bob Ross a disease in Plague Inc. and killed everyone. <laughs> Dustin, I know I do that all the time. I always Where like name it after people I don't like. Here. Oh, <laughs> how could you not like Bob Ross? No, no, I, I, yeah, like why would you make Bob Ross kill everybody? That's right. like, come on, man. Like, you have to do something it's negative. You have to like, zen and... you have to have it like like a dictator or something like, you know, or, or um, I I named mine COVID nineteen because that was more fun. That That's was more perfect. tangible. Why are you playing video games? What else am I gonna do? I, don't I love know. that video game. So I think we can seal this up right here and blow okay, into it. Go ahead. Probably. I'm, I'm just removing some of the extra tissue here. I'll let to, you do that. To be able to see which that line. I don't know, but I'm we gonna let. You can probably seal it up with I'm plastic. I'm gonna let wrap. you do that. Yep. I am not putting my mouth. On, nope, I'm not uh, on it. interested. I'm gonna have you hold the camera here in a second. Okay. See. <laughs> <laughs> oh, JJ. <laughs> All right, we have some kids that are very engaged and getting lots of credit for asking and questions and making weird comments. Um, <laughs> I don't vomit when I drink blood. I mean, I thought it was Kool-Aid. <laughs> that you are a liar, JJ. Like there's no way that that you like like this is not a dare. This is not a dare in any way, shape, or form. I, you know what? I'm gonna put put myself on the screen for a second, maybe okay. possibly. Like, listen, kids, do not get under any circumstances, get any ideas about drinking blood because Selim and JJ like are smart and, and they can't control themselves. Like do not like, just, just don't. Okay. <laughs> oh, Dustin made the disease in honor of Bob Ross. It's illegal to not oh, like him. Perfect. Very good point. Okay. Perfect. So it was an honor of him. Cause like, there's no way, like it's actually kind of ironic cause there's no way Bob Ross would kill all of humanity. Oh God. Like he no. would paint nice little happy little trees and make happy little accidents. Little right I watched him so much when I was a bird. kid. Well, cause that's all that was on. And it's man, true. That, yeah. All we had was PBS. Yep. I had, we had four channels growing up. So yep. it was that and so Arthur wishbone was one of my favorites. All right. So I just took off a lot of the fat and tissue okay. um, that was kind of surrounding this lung. Okay. This, is our, this is our big lung, right? This is the right lung with the three lobes, uh, I think yeah. ish. Uh, yes. Okay. This is the right lung. That's the big one. I wanted to orient myself here. All right. So your trachea is coming in this way. This is going to be your top lobe here. Let's see if I can hold it up. Oh yeah. You can see the three lobes. That is a big lung. How much do you think it weighs based uh, on holding it? 10 pounds. 10 pounds. Just, the, just pounds. one lung on a lung. big cow. Yep. That's a big cow. How much does a, a human lung weigh about? I'm um, not certain. I, I bet you, I, I'm not sure weight wise, but I can tell you that looking at it, this this is easily triple the size of what a human, human lung is going to look more like this much. A little bit more in that size. Yeah. And then the cow lung here is, has massive, you know, massive. I mean, they have a lot, like they, they have a lot more blood to oxygenate and a they lot more a lot muscles. Body to, yeah. to get oxygenated blood around. Too, yeah, it's so really a big cow. Big, bigger heart, bigger lungs. Yep. Yeah. All right, here, um, you hold watch, on to that. Watch the knife. Um, yeah, watch the knife. To... Yeah, take the, well, don't waste your gloves here. Just like, hold it with that or something. There you go. I'll do the move where I, this is how I itch my face in surgery. <laughs> I go like this. Use one of those. Okay. Here you go. You hold on to that. Okay. I gotcha. All right. So let's see if we got any. <laughs> okay. Um, I wonder, let's see. Oh, I've got um, Aiden asking. Let me see if I can't see the whole question. So give me a second. Um, Aiden is asking, he's kind of wondering if animal organs are different than humans or are they all the same? A lot of animals are different than humans. Um, I was expecting a pig heart today and pig hearts are actually really close close to how the human heart is i think that's why they use pigs in a lot of in a lot of um dissections for um teaching purposes but actually i'm, I'm pretty surprised at how easy it was to identify the parts in the cow it doesn't seem like it's, it's that far off yeah um did uh <laughs> I'm just seeing some weird comments again. <laughs> um, don't they do fetal or, uh, or um, heart pig transplants and stuff like that? They use pig heart parts sometimes for people? Um, they have tried that, not with a lot of success, I don't think. Um, they do use certain parts, parts and pieces, like valves and, and such, from pigs. 
but not entire organs. Yep, gonna have to do it a different way. That's what I was afraid of. This is for you guys. <laughs> Hillary, uh, Miss Lehman, you are taking one for the team here. Um, I was happy to dissect that heart, but there is not enough money in the world that would make me put my lips on that trachea. So you are a really good teacher. Uh, we've got a couple other questions. Let's see. Um, Hi says, are the lungs ever the same size? Um, generally, no, they're not because of the heart and its orientation within the within the chest. Um, the heart is on the left side, and that means that that lung usually is not as big as the as the lung on the right side. Oh, we're about to see Miss Lehman blow that lung up. I can't believe she's doing this. About how dense is a human lung compared to a cow? Um, I would say the, the density looks about the same. It's it's more the size that I was surprised at. That lung is so much bigger. Yeah. Um, same density, but massive. Yeah, the density of the tissue feels about the same. I think it is. You need to blow harder. <laughs> I hear it's whistling. It sounds like there's a hole in it somewhere. Do you hear that? Yeah, I heard it. See if you can put your hand over the hole. I don't know where it's. Oh, maybe this. Oh, yeah. This. There we go. Oh, I you. Can feel, I, I could see some. I could see some air, yep. I see I, some air so going in. in. So I'll um. If you point, look at this. This is the go off to the left one. I can feel the air coming out right there. Oh, right, right, because we cut off that, like, that left lung. Try and, like, cover those plug holes. Plug it up. Yeah, plug up the holes and... Oh, look at that tissue oh, look expanding. At this, one. this one's expanding. Yep. Better. The top lung expand it. Top lobe of that lung. Look at it expand. Perfect. Wow. I can feel... I can definitely feel the pressure. The, the pressure. Is trying to get down here. Uh -huh. I think it's just, you know... The weight of it. There's only so much. And right. And that, go. that goes back to that um, vacuum. You know, your lungs are partially suspended open in that vacuum within your chest. So they're never completely collapsed like that. Yeah. Um, so it would take a lot of extra effort to get air down in there. But you can see that top one really expand. Look at that. So it kind of looks like it's changing color a little bit. Definitely changing shape. What else can you tell us about it? I'll just keep doing it. Um, well, the color you're seeing is, is you're kind of pushing the blood around that's still stuck in those tissues. Air came back out the trachea. Oh. <laughs> okay. I, I think you're good on, on that. I wouldn't recommend doing that anymore um, as a friend. <laughs> And make it whistle. That's so weird. Oh, that is very cool. All right. So we're at we're at the point. Basically, I'll take that from you. We're basically at a point where we don't have any more to dissect. Can you think of anything else? Uh, we can cut open the trachea a little bit up here. Okay. You want to just put like a just kind of put a slice in it and sure. take a look at it since we've already done this part. You can see how tough this tissue is. Well, you got to put more force into cutting that, huh? It's almost like the you can see the rings of the. Ooh, cartilage in the trachea yeah. there. They it's almost like little look individual. like little ribs. Yeah. Um, which is essentially what they really they're like are. Soft to ribs. Be honest. They're they're like little riblets. <laughs> riblets. But, um, those are what keep that keep that trachea open and keep it from collapsing. And it has a very it's very smooth on the inside yeah, here. It is. It is. Like, what's the purpose of that being smooth? Like, what's what does it matter? Well, it it moistens it, um, and it because it's smooth and moist, it it helps trap particles when you breathe in air so they hopefully don't get down to your lungs mm. and your your respiratory system has has its own little cleaning system um, there's little things called cilia which you can't see with your naked eye but they're basically little fingers inside there and they're waving and they're they're getting as the air flows back and forth the air flows back and forth they they trap particles and then they push the, the particles and phlegm and sputum up and out of your respiratory system right. because your lungs are sterile inside. Um, and, and this is a protective mechanism to keep it that way. Um, if it's not sterile, it's a condition called pneumonia. And it can Ooh, real sick or that sick. sounds like it's related to what we're currently dealing with in the healthcare system. Uh, yeah, the blocked, blocked airways for sure. It's not, um, people aren't having a good time with it. 
Um, I've got, I'll give you guys about two more minutes to ask questions if you want. I've got one more from Leorne who wants to know where the voice box is located in relation to the trachea, like um, of a human. <laughs> yeah, uh, your voice box is also known as your larynx and it's, it's above, um, kind of between your mouth and your, and Girl, where put, your trachea begins. Me. Like, uh, right about. gloves are nasty, so I'm not going to touch myself, but we're talking in this area inside. Um, what's, your, your larynx. What's the difference between a larynx and a pharynx? Um, your larynx is kind of the beginning of the respiratory system and your pharynx is the ending of your mouth, which is also part of your digestive system. Uh, no food in the larynx, but your pharynx has food in it. Pharynx outside. has food, larynx is lungs. Right. Interesting. Okay, that's a pretty easy way to remember it. Okay, you guys have about a minute, those of you that are watching, to ask any more questions they're they're coming in live so if you guys have any more questions or weird comments coming in hot. yep coming in hot i can't think of anything else to to chop up here I, i'm gonna probably I cook this one more time look at the thickness yeah. of that left ventricle um, like just the massive amount the massive of muscle amount of muscle it's so where's it's, our other it's impressive here's the, like There's our little the atria. Right atria how thin it is yeah no kidding it's just an amazing organ um doing a lot of work yeah, the heart's a big deal. Yep. Keep those hearts healthy. Yeah. Keep those hearts healthy, people. Need it. Get some our, exercise. It's good for you. Time. Okay. You guys have like another 30 seconds. I'll just kind of keep it on this. I'm waiting for any last minute questions to come in before we wrap it up. We've, you guys have done a pretty good job asking good questions. And yeah. Um, yeah, I, you. I'm sure a lot of you are happy. Thanks for Miss Jody our surgical nurse for coming in and sharing all this cool stuff about it. If you're coming in late, you can always start it at back at the beginning and watch the whole thing. Um, it's been, it's been pretty fun. You know, it's kind of gross, but <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> Leorn says, thank you. And, um, JJ would like to use the lungs as a sacrifice. <laughs> um, I think Hillary, uh, Miss Lehman's going to sacrifice them later. Yeah. They're going to get cooked in a slow cooker with water. Anything to go to waste. Yeah. So nothing's going to waste. For education and food. Okay. Oh, how would the virus work in the lungs from Aiden? That's a good question. Um, well, and I assume you're talking about coronavirus, but really any virus. Yeah, um, specifically coronavirus right now. Uh, what they're finding is that they're having having trouble um, with sputum and, and swelling of the airways and blocking off and people aren't able to get oxygenated. And, and from my understanding, they're dying of hypoxia. So high, hypo is low and oxia is not oxygen. not able to get oxygen yeah. to their other organs that need them, um, and, and including your heart. If you right. can't get oxygen to, to your body, your heart starves, and so do your, your kidneys and other organs. And so the patients are going into multi-system organ failure because right. they're not getting oxygen. So, so it gets really severe really fast. This, this really coronavirus really fast and, and the problem is that um, if you have coexisting problems such as a heart condition um, right if you have like a, a weak ventricle wall or like a murmur or if you have like COVID. like damaged alveoli from smoking yep. like the virus is getting into those alveolar cells and and am I saying it right alveolar Alveoli. Alveoli. Yeah. It's getting into those cells and bursting those cells to release more viruses. So it's killing some of the cells in the lungs too. Right. So that way, if you already have, if you're a healthy person, then, you know, your lungs can recover pretty easy. But if you're not, then you already have a limited amount of alveoli in there. Coexisting conditions are, are really a problem with this, with this virus. That's what's doing people in, unfortunately. So stay home, stay safe, wash your hands. Wash, wash your, your hands. Hands, hands, especially before you touch your face. Wash your hands. Okay, we've got uh, Jonah. Um, my apologies, Jonah. You did not want people to know your question, so I'm going to ask somebody else's question. Um, let's. See. <laughs> somebody else's comment is, I, I'm not really sure why Teletubbies came up and and Twinkie Winky told. Oh my God, I can't even. I can't even. Okay, we've got one or two more questions, and then we'll probably wrap it up, is uh, where I got the cow from. I got it from basically a butcher shop of processing. I'll flip it over so you can see me. I got it, went out to Kenyon City where they process meat, um, it, basically where they take the live animal and then get it processed and ready, and they just throw away these parts. So I called them up and asked them if they would be willing to give me these parts, and they did. It's a nice clean grain fed cow it doesn't have any it looks like a fairly healthy cow right it looks very healthy a big heart big strong pink lungs um and then why is everything so big which uh, we kind of talked about earlier but 
because in, that, in short, that organ had to support a very large animal. Um, yeah. It was, it was responsible for getting oxygen to a, a large number of, of cells in a cow's body. <laughs> okay, this seems like a fantastic place to end. Um, Selim still wants to see the dogs, and that is not, <laughs> that's not going to happen while this stuff is out here. So maybe I'll post a little video later of the of dogs, yeah, of them getting to, to perform treats for the little, like, cubed up lung snacks that I make for them. Okay. Um, <laughs> did I taste blood? I've tasted blood before. I mean, I think we all probably have. Like, if you cut your finger and you, like, put it in your mouth to try and stop it from bleeding or cut your lip. Or if you have any kind of dental surgery, you can use, like, you know, flossing. Sometimes, like, you get blood in your mouth. So, yeah, I mean, like, everybody's kind of tasted blood before. Like, we know, but it, most of us, except for vampires, generally agree that blood tastes bad. It tastes bad. Bunch of weirdos. Let me see. Oh, um, oh, Chloe joining us. That's awesome. Um, why does the virus only affect us? Like, as in humans. I'm not sure that they, they even know the answers to that question yet, and I'm not sure that that's 100% true. Um, I am definitely not a virus expert, um, but it sounds like they're trying to find it in some other animals. And the, the problem with viruses is that they change frequently, and so you never know. Yeah, it's what, known as a mutation. Yeah, you never know what it's going to infect next. Yeah, and this coronavirus is probably, like when we watched the video about SARS, it's, it's um, probably came from, I'm trying to flip this stupid phone. It probably came from uh, bats which means that it's a zoonotic virus. Basically, it can infect different types of species, different types of animal species. It affects, it's affecting us the most right now, uh, basically because it's a novel virus. It's something that our systems have never been exposed to. So that makes it really hard for our systems to fight it right away. That's my, that's my short, simple immunology answer. Um, uh, the difference between, from Aiden, difference between an unhealthy heart and a healthy heart and lungs. Like, give us a, a quick rundown of that. Um, I think the biggest thing with, with lungs is the effects of toxins, mostly smoking, um, other things in our environment. Uh, the lungs actually are black in a smoker. So they get tarred. They get tarred. They, they look black. You can see these are nice pink, healthy yeah, organs. Yeah, no black plaque uh, or anything no in there. No staining, no hard plaques. Um you know they they just look real nice and healthy and then the the biggest thing that you see with hearts is is this left ventricle this nice tight you know muscle becomes boggy and baggy and you'll see largening of that of that ventricle oh um, and it's it's our body's reaction to to a problem and, and it it tries to fight off the problem by fixing it and making that muscle bigger but eventually it ends up just being stretched out and and completely ineffective Oof. Yeah. Okay, Th this is it. Just for those of you tuning in, I'll, I'll let Jody hold that for a second and show you guys oh, the well, blowing man. up the lungs again, just so you guys can see it. If you're just tuning in, you can always watch this video back again, just so you know. Oh, I think I found the hole in it. You got still. the wrong hole. Yeah, got the wrong hole, maybe. Where is it? Oh, it's because we cut it. I ah! <laughs> You guys are going to have to watch back, I'd say, like, 15 minutes back from this point. Because uh, I forgot we, that we... Yeah, I we totally put a big blowout. Yeah, this is... Okay, so here, look. This is what happens when you get a hole in your trachea. <laughs> you can't breathe. <laughs> okay. Let me see if we've got... The lungs remind me of a memory foam pillow. Yeah, that's an interesting... That's exactly I like that, X. Like. That's, yeah. a, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. All right, you guys have been awesome. Thank you, Miss Jody. Thank you. This was really, really fun, actually. And you guys, I hope you're having fun in quarantine and that you enjoyed this. Share it with your friends. Wash and your hands. Wash your hands. Miss Jody, say that right into the camera. Wash your hands. All right, bye, everybody. Bye.